Hey friends, this is Marilyn from tarotclarity.com and last week I did a video on Marco Benedetti's Rosamol Tarot, which had the slick box. If you haven't seen that video, you might want to go watch it first. And I said that I was going to do a comparison between it and um, Marco's other Rosenwald, which was, I think, made from uh, make playing cards. So it's a different, it's a more economical option than this one. But still, you know, I wanted to see how they compared. And for good measure, I'm going to throw in the Sullivan Hissman's um, Rosenwald, which has no color because I believe it's just based on existing cards, which, you know, didn't have color. Marco chose to add color. But there were a f the reason I want to um, show and compare it to Hisman's is because there were some missing cards. And I thought it would be interesting to see how both deck creators dealt with the missing cards and, and, and you know, the designs that they chose to use for those, for those missing cards. So let me flip the camera around and get started. Okay, so the way I've arranged them is I wanted the two Marco Benedetti side by side because, um, you know, they were done by the same deck creator. And I have the Hismans on the far right because it's um, in keeping in size with the, the new um, Rosenwald that I, I received from Marco. So clearly from the first card, and, and also I should note that I don't necessarily have the cards in the order that they were originally created, and, and uh, Hisman's has a different sequence a numbering. I've just put all the cards in the more familiar sequence, so disregard the numbers. I just, I disregarded the numbers when I put them in. So right out of the gate, we can see that um, both deck creators had to recreate the Fool. Right. Um, Hisman's uh, went, I guess, with a bit of a um, a nod to TDM with the little beast or the little creature, you know, which we do see in some Italian decks. But a lot of times, sometimes it's with the, the magician card or the card that we call the magician, and sometimes it is with the noisemaker or the fool. Um, but uh, Marco Benedetti opted to leave out any reference to an animal. And Marco's looks more like the idiot, you know, like the village idiot or something like that. Um, the color remains pretty much the same. The green leggings might vary a little bit. So uh, uh, Marco, with the more recent deck or the, uh, you know, the more handmade deck, um, change the backs because I think the backs, no one really knows what the backs look like. Let's see what Hisman's did. Yeah. Um, but for this, for this, you know, more um, in keeping with the size deck that Marco did, that was a little more expensive deck, um, he added the bordered edges, which would have been in keeping with the real you know, the, the, the original decks of that period of time. Okay, we also see a reversal um, between Marcos and the Hismans. Now, I believe the both of the, both decks, the Hismans and the Marco Benedetti deck, were based on the deck that's here in the United States, for those of you who are in the States, at the National Gallery in Washington, D.C. But Hisman's um, reversed the images because there's another deck in, oh gosh, in, I guess, I don't know if it's in Germany. Um, let's see. Yeah, there's another deck in the collection of the, I'm not going to say that word. <laughs> and um, it clearly, that particular deck clearly shows that the trumps 
were in the correct orientation. So Hisman's, um, based on that, decided to reorient and, and change the direction of the of the decks, but of the uh, the way the cards faced. Um, whereas Marco may you know may have been aware of that, but chose to just copy the cards as the cards exist. So again, Marco maintains the same design, a little bit different. He changed, he put added blue in the leggings and the arm covering. And with the Hisman's, there is no color. And the orientation is different. And there's a number. So the big difference is between the two Marcos is the size, the card stock, the um, the deck in the center um, is more in keeping with the the actual size of the cards, as is Hisman's. Now this one isn't in reverse, um, so there must be certain cards that were reversed and other cards that were not. Because if he did it in reverse, then the, the, the key would be in the other direction. Basically the same. I think the cobwebs in the corners or the scalloped um, appearance of scalloped, you know, embellishments, I think that's a Florentine thing, which I think they both concur. So you have to decide um, if you like the bigger deck, if you like the smaller deck, if you prefer it in color or if you prefer it in, you know, line drawing. And Marco changed the color of the garb in the Pope a little bit. So in the Hisman Sullivan, Sullivan Hisman's rather, it doesn't look like there's a hat or maybe it was understood differently, I'm not sure. There, that's colored hat. They changed, and Marco changed the color of the hat and the clothing and the leggings a little bit, changed his mind. <laughs> Still no reversal, so there just must be some cards that were reversed. Unless I completely misunderstood, <laughs> which is possible. Now I know that they both had to recreate the wheel to a fair extent. Let's see what Hismans did. 
Yeah, because I think the wheel was missing half. So you see they're quite different um, in how they decided to reinterpret. So what must have been in common was the top portion with leg. Oh, but then, but then we have a globe in this one where we don't have it here. We have an animal face on this guy that we don't have here. And this one is losing the crown. So here, gosh, it looks like the wheel's going this way if this person's losing their crown. Wow, I th you know I was thinking it was going the other way before, but I guess not. Fortitude. Okay, now here we have a reversal with fortitude. So it was only some cards that were reversed, I guess. So here we have. Um, a slight difference in color that Benedetti did. He um, differentiated a little bit up here with color. And the hanged man is reversed in the Hismans. As is death. So Mar Marco also changed up the halo a little bit. Now the Flintstones devil. I call it the Flintstones devil. That's what it looks like to me. It's also in reverse. And the beginning of the celestial cards with whatever's going on in the sky with the building. Also in reverse. The star. And we see that the moon is in reverse with the Hismans. And it's subtle. No, I, it's subtle, but it's also in the sun because you can see that the little direction of this little cloud here is going in this in this direction. So the sun is also in reverse. But it's a very subtle thing, you can't tell unless you're really scrutinizing it. Okay, and I know the angel card sometimes is the last card, but for the sake of viewing, I put it in the penultimate position. And it's looking like there was some modification here also. Whereas these two angels appear to look this way, this angel goes this way, and these individuals aren't quite the same. This guy is similar here. But this woman is a little different. It looks like two men here in these cards. And here it looks like a man and a woman. And the world card. is also in reversed. So the Hismans and the Marco Benedetti, smaller ones, the Hismans is a little taller, but not by much. They're very much in keeping in size with one another. 
and the more economical um, Rosenwald by Marco is bigger and it's bigger than you know like a Rider Waite Smith deck it's a little bit oversized okay so now we're moving on to the pips and I know my geeks are staying here <laughs> Only a tarot geek would hang in there this long. But I think it's very interesting and very important, you know, to uh, see um, that just because you have a, a historic deck doesn't mean that it's exactly the way it was published originally. Because modern day deck creators have to take certain liber liberties, or they do take certain liberties, to um, try to make sense of what they're left with. Right. I mean, certainly they were printed in black and white, right? As 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 this you know deck was found, um, but they probably then a color would have been applied, you know. So does a deck creator just you know um, recreate what they think the color would be, or do they leave it, you know, in the unfinished possibly the unfinished state of of how the deck was created? Then also. If you see that it's in reverse, but there's another deck in another museum somewhere, right, that, that clearly shows the intended direction, do you reverse it, as Hisman's did for some of the cards? So there are things that have to be done and decisions that have to be made all the time when you see a recreated deck. And I think that's why it's kind of interesting to put them side by side. And even, you know, Marco's deck, um, you know, you can get the more economical deck, you know, um, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with this deck. Um, but then, you know, he made, he made the decision, um, you know, with the other production or the other publication of, of uh, making the size different and then adding the edges and the back. And that's why I love having multiple decks of the same thing because um, it gives me, too, greater understanding of, you know, realizing that what we see today is not necessarily exactly how it was presented in its day. And you know, the price point too. Um, when the Rosenwald came out by Hisman's, when it first came out, um, I was not able to get the deck, you know, so I missed out. And then um, when I saw Marco created the deck in a very affordable production, I grabbed it, right? And then at some point, I, I think I contacted Sullivan Hismans and I said, I'd really like to have your copy. Um, are there any left? And he said, yeah. So I, I, he, there was one or two or whatever was floating around. And I think um, I, I think there might have been a mistake on mine, um, at, which is probably why it wasn't originally sold because it says like 2027 rather than 2017. So I might have gotten a deck that was wrong. You know, it was like um, this was written in error and he couldn't sell it. But when I asked him, you know, do you have any more floating around? And um, he sent me that. So I might have gotten, you know, an error, a mistake, right? So... I was still happy that I was able to get this. And then, you know, then I had the two. I, I had the both of, the, of these. And then when Marco 
graciously said, I, you know, I'm sending you a deck. Will you review it? I was like, yeah, are you kidding me? So now I have this beautiful, you know, version, which is in keeping with the original, you know, just has, you know, the embellishment of color and the border, which is it, typical of decks of its time and the back which we don't really know what the backs, I don't think we knew, knew what the backs look like because we only have sheets. Okay, so we're getting up there with eight. I think the tens had to be recreated if I'm not mistaken. So we may see a little variation in the tens between the deck creators of all the suits. I think all the, all the tens had to be redone or reimagined. Let's see, here we are with the tens. Oh, yeah, okay. So Marco did the crossing with the swords as we see often, and Hisman's did not. He had, you know, two arrangements of five. But it's anyone's guess what it really would, would have been. Who knows? Oh, sorry about this. Mm. Okay, so now we're back to the same direction. Also, we have different embellishment on the head, on the headgear. So it's possible that the top part might have been damaged and each just kind of filled in the blanks. I don't know. I, I haven't read that either of them replaced anything on this particular card, but it looks evident that there is a difference. And they're going in the same direction. And the queens have been reversed with Hisman's. And I think we have two queens when it comes to Hisman's. So I don't know if, I don't know what happened there. Um, but this queen is a little more refined, right? She kind of doesn't look like she fits in even though she's more lovely. Um, this looks more in keeping with the, the, the facial expressions and that the lack of elegance, you know, and it has its own elegance, but lack of refinement maybe in the way the cards are printed. It's more in keeping with that. Okay, so here we have the king. So we have a little flower pot thing going on, like we see in the Piedmont decks, maybe. And Marco embellished, you know, the cups a little bit more with different, you know, little spots of red inside the cups is pretty. So of the three, I'm happy to have all three. Please don't misunderstand me. And they're all valuable in their in their own way. This one for being, you know, more affordable, right? Um, this one for being more of a luxury, you know, very pretty, embellished with the edges, nice box, that kind of thing. And then the Hissmans, um, being, I think, like one of the first representations of the Rosenwald, so it was very much, you know, something I wanted to have because um, I think it was the first of its kind. I think, you know, um, I didn't know of anyone else who did the the Rosenwald, and also that its lack of color represents how the the deck exists in real life. So, 
all three have value to me. Okay, I'm going to have to start new piles because they're getting wonky. <laughs> So since they base their decks on the same deck in Washington with keeping in mind the reversals, you know, um, based on another deck in, in, I guess it was Germany, it looks like a German word, um, where there's differences, then that's where they both had to make changes or corrections or not corrections, but they had to reimagine what we're looking at. So it seems like quite a few of the cards must be extant, right? They're, we're not talking about too many missing because they're very similar. You know, they're just about identical in, for the most part. But if I were to make a value judgment for myself, like which one um, do I like or which one would I probably use most often? It would probably be the center one. Because, uh, okay, so here we have a 10, which looks much larger in the Hisman's. All oh, right, because the 10s of all the decks, of all the suits, had to be reimagined, that's right. So they had to reimagine all, all of them. But they both ch chose to have the 10th tenth, the tenth, uh, cup sideways rather than fitting it in. Okay, again, the queens, and I think Hisman's, no, he didn't, he didn't give us another queen. Oh, this is a maid. That's right. These are the maidens. And remember with the um, Italian decks that the suit, the passive suits of cups and coin, the valet or the page was often a, a young girl, a maid, or I guess she would be a maiden. And the only difference here is one has a, an embellishment with her hair. So, otherwise they look just about exactly the same. So maybe there was a fuzzy section regarding her hair and that's how they both imagined that it would have looked. Okay, so when we have the knight, all three going in the same direction. And with the queens, I think Sullivan gave us extra queens, okay. Also looking in the other direction. And the Queen of Cups of Marcos is more in keeping with the rest of the, the suit, the way the cups looked in the rest of the suit. And Sullivan gives us one that's in keeping with the rest of the deck, rest of the suit but with a more refined face and one with the face that's in keeping with the rest of the deck, but with a cup that doesn't look, doesn't match the other cups in the suit. So you get extra queens with the Sullivan deck. Okay, now somehow, oh, there he is. So we have the king. Now the king in Solomon's deck, Sullivan's deck has a cup that matches the rest of the cups in the suit. That's interesting. So Marco changed up the color of the green a little bit as he did with all the cups in the suit. With, the, with this deck, he added a little red, right? 
and of course the border. And they're both looking, both deck creators had them both looking in the same direction. Now we have a reversal with the direction of the hand presenting the ace of baton. Yeah, it's kind of challenging to do three decks, especially when the cards are a little slippery. Okay, so um, this is a mistake I made. One of them is in the wrong direction. I don't know which. And I'm going to do this because I don't really know. But two out of three were oriented this way, so I'm assuming that this is correct. Again, two out of three are going in this direction, so that's how I'm going. <laughs> Two out of three were going the other way, but so it, it could just be that I got them wonky. Okay, the nines. And again, the tens of all suits had to be reimagined. So here we go. And again, Marco you know, had, um, you know, the extra diagonal and horizontal as he, and, and he had the two um, diagonal with the swords, whereas um, Sullivan Hisman's um, chose five and five on either side. So it's anyone's guess what it would have been like. Okay, so now we're moving on to the valet of baton. All three oriented in the same way. A little variation in the headgear here. Right? So they may have had the majority of the card, but they had to maybe tweak something about the, the helmet. Uh, maybe there was a piece missing or it was just kind of damaged and you couldn't tell. And they maybe had to reimagine how they felt it might have looked. Again, we have a different direction with the Knight of Baton. And I'm guessing that Sullivan Hismans has given us an additional queen. Let's see, yep. Okay, so the Queen of Batons must have needed to be recreated because um, Sullivan's, uh, Hisman's decided to make the Queen look at us almost in a judgment card kind of way. Whereas Marco, I think, felt that if there was two Queens looking that way and that the third one was looking this way, that the fourth one was probably also looking this way. So they both had to recreate imagine what the queens might have looked like. And we have the kings of batons. All three in the same direction. Okay, so now we're moving on to the last suit. Aren't you happy? The suit of coin. 
with the hare and the hound. All in the same direction. Two coins. Three, and I probably don't have to hold them up, but I guess I am anyway. The four, and sometimes I see on forums when you know modern deck makers are, you know, reimagining a deck like a Tower of Marseille deck, or they're. You know, doing a new deck in an old style, you know, do, do you put numbers on it or not? You know, and I, I imagine purists, and I, I guess sometimes I'm a purist, uh, you know, you don't really need the numbers because you can just count the images. Um, but when you're reading the cards and you're interpreting the cards, sometimes you make a mistake. I do, I do. you know, sometimes I imagine what I'm seeing, <laughs> you know, is a different number than what it is. So, and then sometimes with the old decks, the numbers that are put on the cards aren't really the right numbers. So then you're looking at the number, but the number of items on the, on the card aren't matching what the number is. So, um, and everything's all about perception, isn't it? So how, I, the way I handle it, if I make a mistake or if the card maker, maker makes a mistake, whatever, is I just, however I perceive the card at the time that I'm doing the interpretation is how it gets read. And, you know, I'm not apologizing for it because it's about receiving a message. And if that's how you receive it, that's how it's, you know, that's how I receive it. That's how it's going to be said, I guess. You know, I don't deliberately make errors, but it happens. And um, I don't think it's an error to receive something differently. It's like somebody tells you something 12 times, but then you hear it. <laughs> You don't hear it the way it's being said, you know? Um, because as you were hearing it, you were processing it differently than maybe a typical person. Alrighty. Down to the courts. Again, in the same direction. Now, there must have been some difference because the... Queen of the maid's faces look a little different between the two decks, as does the size of the coin. So I'm guessing there was a similar, you know, there was damage done above this point, and they had to reimagine the, the border, the neckline, right? They had to re reimagine maybe the face or the hair and the size of the thing. But it seems like it was a an issue above the, you know, like at the shoulder length or something, shoulder level. Okay, the knights. Looking in different, going in different, you know, they're facing different directions. So they're reversed. So not all of the deck of the cards in the Hismans are reversed, but, but a handful are. And I think we have two queens, right? One that has a more refined face, a little bit more of an elegant face. And one's in keeping, in greater keeping with what we have here. And also notice the change in the coin, right? That the, the rest of the suit of coins matches this. Um, but in the more crude queen, he has a completely different coin, which is interesting. And the king. And they all three are facing in the same direction. They have the same orientation there. So here, there we have it. We have the Make Playing Cards version of uh, Marco Benedetti's Rosamold in color. We have, I'm not really sure, you know, I, the box is handmade, 
Um, I'm not really sure how, how to distinguish this, what this one's called, but I, I think if you were to order it over at Marco's Facebook page, um, you'd clearly be able to make out that it's a different box than this one. This one, I think you go over to make playing cards and you'll find it. Um, but I think you'll have better luck going to Marco's Facebook page and ordering from there or navigating your way from there. And then the Sullivan Hissmans, um, you, you would go to uh, Tarot Sheet Revival. And if I can find their links there, I'll put them, I'll put them down, of course. So until next time, friends, thank you for being here. Thank you for, uh, you know, going through these cards and looking at the subtle differences between them. And until next time, friends, peace and stay well.